This week, we're going to talk about spatialization and silence. How you use those two aspects to really build tension. Spatialization is creating space in the stereo field for the position of individual sounds. That's what we've already looked at. Panning from left to right, but also using volume, reverb, and EQ filters to create the illusion of front to back motion. It can also encompass extending the sound field to surround sound, 5.1, 7.1, octophonic, whatever, or binaural audio to add a more realistic sense of being in the center of the action when you're listening to things. Normally, we would also look at how to diffuse a stereo or multi-channel mix across a multi-channel array of speakers, but Thanks to COVID, we're doing this all online, so we can't really, unfortunately. But we will make do. So what's the point of spatialization? Well, in acousmatic music, it's to control the musical narrative and develop the action through the piece by changing where things occur. To mask the creation of a new event under an existing one. If you have two things panned in the same position, and one starts off completely silent and then you increase the volume, you hide that transition when it comes in. You can use space as an aspect of the composition and give things motion and depth. Like if you take footsteps moving from one side to the other, or if you pan laser sounds across, or if you take in a mix the solo instrument that's normally on the right-hand side and just bring it into the center so everybody can hear it. In film sound design and music, it also helps to place sounds where they appear on the screen. This is heightening the illusion of realism. If you see a gun fire on the left and you hear it coming out of the left side of the speakers, it's more believable. It also serves the narrative of the film. If you're heightening the effect by bringing in the most prominent sounds and making sure that the audience can hear those and can hear where they are placed in the left to right access and making sure that that matches what they're seeing on the screen. In games, this gets a little bit more fun. You can use spatialization to place sounds in a way that they grow or fade in proximity to the character. Do the same thing with zones that change the music as the player moves through the level. You can also use spatialization to let the sounds travel through the environment, like left to right, front to back, up and down, anywhere in 360 degree space around the player's audible range, like projectile tra uh, tracing of weapons fire or ambience, you know, hearing birds call from far away. And then as you get closer, they get louder. All of this creates an immersive environment that reacts to the player's viewpoint and really helps sell the illusion of immersion. But in all cases, this is creating a separate place for each sound so that it can be heard in the mix and is used to reinforce realism and narrative. Silence is equally important. So let's just get this straight. Pure silence is possible acoustically only in an anechoic chamber or in a vacuum. And I will tell you now, being in an anechoic chamber is surreal. Uh, you can hear your own heartbeat and it, you will start to freak out just a little bit. I've been in them a couple of times. Outside of an anechoic chamber, however, you can record extremely quiet sounds with a mic uh, with extremely low self noise, high directionality, and a good windscreen. That is the main purpose of the anechoic chambers, to get those really, really super quiet sounds. But, you know, if you work to minimize noise as much as possible, you can get pretty close, but it's nearly impossible to eliminate all noise. So choose your battles wisely, record as best you can, and deal with noise using EQ, filter, gates, and masking. Uh, but you can also use some noise removal software. But just be aware, again, 
perfect silence, recording in that perfectly silent environment is extremely unlikely to ever happen, especially since we're doing this class online. Compositionally, however, silence is a really interesting concept. So we compose by writing notes and arranging sounds, but up until John Cage and the infamous 4 minutes 33 seconds, silence was never really a consideration. But he brought that piece out and people were forced to listen to silence and realize that no, not everything that we consider silence is not silence. There's people coughing, there's angry whispers, there's programs rustling, someone is opening a cough drop behind me. Up ahead, I see you know, a guy whose clothes are rustling as he adjusts in his chair. I hear the ticking of someone's watch. Compositionally, if you're using it, it creates some really great, great ideas. You can use it to heighten tension by holding off on the resolution, letting a phrase die away completely to nothing, and then bringing in the next phrase. It builds expectations. By using silence, it lets isolated events stand out when they're separated by actual silence, especially if these events occur at quieter volumes, something very subtle like rubbing your fingers together next to a mic. You can't pick that up and hear it in a really noisy environment uh, on a recording unless you really just compress the heck out of it. It serves another purpose, though. It lets the ears reset after hearing louder events. We talked about this in psychoacoustics back in uh, MUS 3701, but prolonged exposure to loud sounds means that you stop being able to hear the quieter ones until your ears have a chance to relax and reset. So incorporating silence into your piece can help a lot. As an example, um, a couple years ago I created a piece called Concrete Oasis for the Arts Council of Greater Lansing, and the first piece in that set that was uh, completed is called Exploring the Remains of a Giant. Take a listen to that. The recording is posted. That has a great use of silence and very, very minimal sounds to create a sonic environment and use the silence to direct the listener to individual sounds and heighten the tension. Uh, the whole idea is that you are wandering through an abandoned big box store where the only things that you can hear are the occasional uh, over the intercom announcements from the automated playback system of the store. Have fun with that. Together, combining space and silence, you have just exceptionally powerful tools for composing acousmatic music because they create tension and expectation for the listener. They can be used to describe motion and transformation, especially when we pair them in binaural audio, which we'll look at soon, and using that to place sounds in ways that really, really make them stand out and make you feel like you're in the environment. And using those and contrasting that and using the changes in the dynamic range when going from soft to silent to loud, it creates a level of depth that is all but forgotten in current audio practice where everything is compressed and you essentially are looking at a solid black bar of death when you're looking at the waveform of a commercially reduced song. So this adds more depth. It allows you to use the full dynamic range of your interface, of your microphones. And most importantly, as I said, it creates tension and expectation.